Hello everybody and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. My name is David Waralu. Whoever thought the country of Hungary now is blocking the European Union financial aid to Ukraine of about 20, uh, 18 billion euros. Yeah, you give Hungary a credit for standing on its feet and challenging the EU. So what I'm, this is what I'm going to be talking to you in this video, provide you some insights. And by the way, it wasn't reported in the Western media. I just had to make a phone call to Europe to find that out. You know, maybe some media here, they mentioned it, but I, I looked, didn't see any. So. But before I delve deeper, make sure to subscribe and uh, smash that notification button so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. And please make sure to watch the video in its entirety. Sometimes I make conclusions at the end and that will help me out as far as the, the algorithm for the, the, the YouTube, you know how it works. You know, anytime you click that like button, it, it moves up the channel upward. So, and I can't thank you enough for your support. It means a lot to me. So let's dive in into this issue. Hungary, yeah, is blocking because Hungary, as you know, is a member of the European Union. And as a member, it can vote on blocking certain policies. Well, they are blocking the, uh, the transfer of 18 billion euros to Ukraine. It's almost like, how much money can we be giving to Ukraine? And where does it go to begin with? I mean, I just find out today that uh, uh, President Biden, he met with the uh, Indonesian president, Joko Wadudo, and also Ursula von der Leyen of the uh, European Commissioner. And they are asking for $600 billion to be sent to Ukraine. Why? Why? Europeans are themselves, or the West, that is for that matter, created the problem to begin with. So why countries like Hungary, a member of the EU, be paying the price for that? And this is why you are now noticing more demonstrations in Europe. There are demonstrations as we speak in Germany, which once again, we are not hearing about. There are demonstrations in France, which we are not hearing about. Uh, and they are, of course, the Moldova one. I talked about this one before, but this just to give you an idea, even in England, you know, it's not a European member anymore, but they, they have their own economic issues, which, by the way, it's collapsing and they are keeping a lid on it. They don't want to. BBC is not talking openly about that. So that's by orders of the government, I guess, or whatever. So, but the point I, I take a uh, focus on uh, on Hungary which again, I respect their standing for saying, no, enough is enough. Because the question they are asking is, what are, we member what are we getting out of this membership? You all remember the video that I did last time about Hungary, uh, sort of uh, the consideration of leaving the EU altogether, because there's no benefit in it. But also because the cracks are starting to expand within the European bloc, the EU that is. So it's just a matter of time, uh, as we notice in now, even the two key members of the EU, Italy and France, are butting heads over immigration. You all know what Italians did, uh, the Giorgia Maloney, the new PM, she sent the immigrants from Italy to France and said to France, you deal with that. So, and if, you're, if uh, France and Germany that are advocating for this uh, 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 Ukraine stuff, whatever, why aren't they hosting the immigrant, immigrants from Ukraine? It's a double standard. You can just see. So what they say versus what they do are the opposite. And this is where you admire a country like Hungary now that is standing, you know, sort of putting the sticks on the ground. This is where we stand as far as this issue and rightly so. Because Europeans are seeing some members, some European uh, uh, members uh, of the EU or some countries uh, as part of the EU, they are seeing that the policies are ill-conceived. That the policies that they are embarking on are not working for the benefit of people. This is unlike what, for example, the Indonesian president, Joko Wadudu, did when he challenged the United States and the West 
EU for that matter, as far as purchasing Russian oil. Why? Because it benefits his people, given the, uh, uh, the, uh, the rise in energy prices around the world. You're all aware of it. Whatever part of the world you're in, I am sure you are aware of the uh, rise in, in, in energy prices. So, so to him, to Joko Wadudu was like, no, my country comes first. Policy and politics and all that aside. The Europeans couldn't do that. Like Germany and France couldn't do that. Italy is now in between because there are demonstrations in the street asking the government to stop completely sending weapons to Ukraine. Why? Because it prolonged the war. And this is where why Hungary decided, okay, enough is enough. You know, now the European Union is threatening Hungary, you know, and Hungary is saying, sure, we'll be done with this EU altogether. And we all know what's going to come after that. Because here is the thing. When, it's not if, but when Hungary leaves the EU, they're just going to establish ties with Russia as far as having energy, access to that. And because they depend on that a lot, and they will be fine without the EU. Because the EU is also imposing immigration policy on Hungary and Poland for that matter. So, so you can just see where this is going. And again, uh, why the media is not here in the West, why they are not reporting on this, it's beyond me. But at the same time, we all know why. Because they want to keep the masses in the dark. They don't want you to be aware of what's going on or how other countries are reacting to this uh, conflict that we created to begin with. Because the bottom line is, if we didn't expand eastward, this would have not happened at all. That's the bottom line. But nobody wants to hear that in the West because it's the truth. And this is why I wanted to share with you. So here's my question for you before I'll, I'll, I'll sign off here. Do you think uh, Hungary will bow to, Europe, to the EU pressure or it will stand its ground regarding this issue? So let me know what you think. And I, as always, I like to read your comments. But remember, geopolitics impacts your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.